Yo, Elliot, my girlfriend went to an old girlfriend's apartment for a party, an hour drive to the city at night by herself. She says I'm being controlling because I didn't want her to go. I make sure not to tell her she can't do things, but I made it clear that I don't feel respected because I told her it was not safe to go and that I could take her on the, to the city on the weekend, but she still went. I want her to hang out with her girlfriends, but not with the circumstances she was in the other night. Am I being insecure? I would greatly appreciate your thoughts on this. I don't think you're being insecure. And I think that people who say that because you love someone to such a degree that you don't want them to do dangerous things makes you insecure is because they're retarded. People say that shit all the time. You must be insecure. Like, for example, I have a, a trending TikTok right now. Uh, somebody made a TikTok account with videos from me. I didn't even freaking make it. But in the video, I was talking about how men want women that are vulnerable and soft and and, and women that are feminine, not a CEO masculine type, uh, you know, hard driver, bull dyke type bitch, right? Which all these women, they think they're supposed to be. And all these stitches are coming back, which basically means they respond to it. And the first thing all these dumb bitches say is, oh, you must be insecure. How am I insecure because I have a preference for the type of woman that I want? I don't want a, I don't want a bull dyke uh, driver, right? I don't, want, I don't need some woman that's going to compete and try to, try, to be, try to be like a man, right? I don't, it's not, I'm not interested in that. Not because I'm insecure. I could deal with other men that are like that. I could deal with business partners that are like that. I got business partners that are smarter than me. They're, they're much better than me. Everything in regard to business. If I was insecure, I couldn't deal with that. No, but the woman that I want laying next to me in my bed, I have a particular preference for. I have a particular way I'd like to be with her. And one of the things that I would appreciate from the type of woman that I spend my life with is to be respected when I have a request. I would rather you not go there. I could, then you did the right thing. Don't, you can't tell her she can't go, right? Because now you're a legit oppressor. But you explain to her, I don't feel right about you going. I, and this is what I do. Sometimes my wife, it's not that there are a lot of things that she does that I disapprove of, although there are a few things that, that do come up every once in a while. And a lot of times all I say is this, and I do this with my daughters too, with my children. All I say is this, just understand that your father doesn't approve. I don't know. Or I tell my wife, I just want you to know I don't approve. Okay, hey, do what you want. Just understand I don't approve. And so that alone is just putting your foot down. You cannot force somebody. You can't make somebody. Like you say, you can't make her, you can't tell her she can't do it, but she needs to understand, I don't approve of what you're doing right now. Okay, you do what you want to do, but you don't have my blessing. You do not have my approval. If that matters to her, that means that you're important to her. If that doesn't matter to her, that means her agenda, her ego, what she wants to do is more important. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you let that let it be known that, hey, look, I don't approve, and they don't care. I don't care that you don't approve. Oh, okay. Now I know. Now I understand where you are in relation to me. You don't care that I don't approve. Fine. You just got to leave things as they are and let them be what they are sometimes, right? You can't, you can't fuss or fight. You just got to make it. My opinion is you got to make your opinion known. You always got to make your opinion known. Don't ever bite your tongue or pretend like something is something that is not. But I will tell you this. Do not let anybody tell you that means that you're insecure. Having preferences does not make you insecure, right? Having boundaries does not make you insecure. In fact, it makes you more secure. Having requests for the way you would like things to be in your family, with your wife, with your children, with the people you love, does not make you insecure. That's what the world, the feminized world, let me tell you something. F feminism has, is a double-edged sword because at the same time it teaches women to be strong and independent, which doesn't really exist, it's all fake. But then at the same time, it makes men weak. It makes men weak and wishy-washy. And they do that by shaming you for having any masculine virtue at all. And to be a boundary setter and a rule maker, right? Who makes the rules? The ruler. But they don't want you to be a ruler. They don't want you to act like a puppy dog with your tail between your legs rolling over whenever they want to do what they want to do. 
You know how they do that? They do that by shame, shaming you. One of the first things they will say is, who hurts you? <laughs> who hurts you? Or you must be gay. Or you're insecure. Or uh, you have fragile masculinity. Don't let that shit scare you. Don't let that, yeah, small dick energy. Thank you, Raphael. Don't let that shit scare you. When people say stuff like that, that's because they have nothing left. They have nothing left to say about you. And they, so they're trying to turn it around on you like there's something wrong with you. No, I have preferences. I have standards. I have boundaries. I am a man. That's what we do. And a man that doesn't have preferences, a man that doesn't have boundaries, and a man that doesn't have the voice to stand up and say what's right is no man at all. Right? But again, like I said, they want you to be a fag. They don't want you to be a man. So if, if nothing else comes of this conversation, it's this. I think you did the right thing. You let her go, right? You didn't force her. You let her go. You spoke your opinion. You say, I would rather you not do it. But you're going to go anyway? Look, you just, you just take that bit of information. You just put it in the back of your mind. Oh, okay, no doubt. Put that in the back of your mind, right? right? Not that you need to bring it up. And use it against her, but so you know if you see another red flag or you see other red flags, you could be like, okay, I'm not caught off guard. You don't want to be caught off guard. They say, never listen to what a woman says. Look at what she does, right? Because women will say all kinds of things to keep the peace because that's their nature. Oh, they keep the peace. They just try to keep be nice, right? Because egalitarian, right? Because they want to be nice. But we watch what they do. If you watch what a woman does long enough and you start to see a pattern then and a pattern of red flags, right? Like, look, if this is a one-time situation, look, so be it. I don't know what's so important that she needs to drive an hour at night to the city to see her friend. To me, that's a little suspect to begin with. Like, that don't make any sense. Why do you need to go there so bad that you have to drive an hour in the city at night right now? And I told you I could take you in the morning. I told you I could take you, but you have to go. Who is there going to be somebody there? What is what's going on there that's so so exciting that you have to disobey my request, right? You have to ignore my request, and you have to go and do some dangerous shit. There must be something really good out there. I will ask her that. But what's out there that's so important? What is going on there that's so important that you need to do that? Oh, uh, ooh, my friend, my friend. Okay, all right. Let's put that in the back of your head. So you didn't do the right, you didn't do the wrong thing. I think you did the right thing. And I don't think you're insecure. You're being a good man. You're being a good husband. You're doing the right thing. And so don't second guess yourself. Second guess her. You need to second guess her. That's the other thing too, man. Because, you know, the, the effeminate world, I can't, I can't blame women because what has happened is feminism has put the woman's worst values, the, her worst attributes on blast, and then it takes men and teaches them how to be the worst of women, right? Rather than taking the best of what it is to be a man and trying to live up to that, no, what feminism is not that. It's they take the worst of what's in a woman and put that on blast, and then they teach men to act that way. So I say a feminine world because men behave this way also. I don't remember where I was going with that. But the bottom line is... Uh, you're doing the right thing and the world will have you think otherwise. The world will have you think otherwise, but you're all right. Don't second guess yourself. Not in this situation. You're not being insecure. You're being a man. Don't. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.